Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to talk about in this video is probably one of the number one things that we get asked, and it's how do I navigate the Ubiquity Unify ecosystem to get the products that I want, or how should I be doing it? And with all of the new products and all of the different ways that you can manage Unify hardware. And when I say Unify, we can't just think network. We have to think Unify Talk and we, because the network side of it is actually the Unify Network application. And we have other applications. So you can see where this starts getting a little, uh, maybe a little confusing. And I'm hoping that this presentation that I'm going to, that I've got here, I'm hoping that it helps just a little bit. So I'm going to fire this up. And I am calling this Ubiquity, Navigating the Unify Ecosystem, Hardware and Software. There's a whole lot of other things we got to cover. There are other vendors that I need to do the same thing for. But we are starting with the Ubiquity Unify Ecosystem. So let's get started. So when we look at Unify, Unify is really the overarching name of an entire suite of hardware and software. And when we dig down into it, it gets a little bit more confusing, right? So we have what you'll see referred to in the Ubiquity world as control planes. So where are you, what is the control plane that your software is, is running on? You'll see that, that term quite a bit in their documentation. Now, from kind of a high level overview, I've broken it down into Unify OS, and then Unify Network. And the reason that I did that is because Unify Network is actually the only piece of Ubiquity software that you don't have to run on a Uni uh, Unify console or a Unify cloud gateway. So your Unify consoles are your NVR series and your cloud key devices. And even though they're running Unify OS, they don't run Unify Network. And like I said, Unify Network is the only application that we can run independently if we want to. So under Unify OS, which is a proprietary operating system that Ubiquity has designed, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's might be based on uh, Debian or Ubuntu, one of the two. But underneath Unify OS, we have Unify Connect, Unify Access, Unify Network, Unify Protect, and Unify Talk. So when we say Unify, we have to specify. Are we talking about Unify OS itself, which runs on the cloud gateways and the consoles? And I believe it actually runs on the gateways, but not to the extent that it runs on a cloud gateway. And we're going to get into the difference between those here shortly. So Unify Connect, we're going to talk about all these, what they do, and their weaving integrations between all of the different Unify platforms, whether it's Unify Access, Connect, Network, Protect, or Talk. They're, they have woven integration between these products. So to recap here, Unify OS is a Unify operating system that runs on Ubiquity Unify hardware, but Unify Network can be run independently, and we're going to talk about that. Okay, so under Unify OS, we kind of covered some of this. You have Unify, I don't know why I have Connect first, but it was supposed to be Access, but Unify Connect, Access, Network, Protect, and Talk. And these run, like I said, on cloud gateways or consoles. So your cloud gateways are going to be your UDM Pro, your Enterprise Fortress, device, your UNVR, your enterprise UNVR, your uh, Cloud Key Gen 2, the Cloud Gateway Fiber. These are all running Unify OS at some level, and you can run Unify Connect, Access, Network, Protect, and Talk kind of on these devices, and we'll, we'll go through that here. I do want to get Unify Network out of the way because I think it can be one of the most confusing because it is the only piece 
of the Unify stack, Unify network, is the only one that we don't have to run on a Unify OS console or Unify cloud gateway. Like I said, your cloud gateways are your UDMs, your UDRs, any of these other devices that run Unify network natively, and you have to manage them with the Unify network application that is running on them. You cannot manage them on a self install. Here's where it gets even just a little bit stickier as we talk about the Unify network that you can host yourself because you can actually buy a Cloud Key Gen 2 and run network on there, have multi site, and have it be kind of independent. So it's, it's kind of a, an interesting product because it will also run all of the other Unify applications. Now, your cloud gateways are running Unify OS with the ability to run the full Unify stack. Your what we call gateways. So when you're on the, Uni, the uh, Unify store, you're going to notice that there's a button for cloud gateways and then there's going to be an advanced hosting option. When you go to advanced hosting, you're going to see the cloud keys. You're going to see all of what we're just calling gateways. They're not cloud gateways because they don't run the full stack of software. Now, if you want to host your own Unify network application, you can run it on a cloud key. You can do official hosting with Ubiquity. There are some third party uh, companies that will allow you, that's their whole business model is to host the Unify network application. You can run it yourself. We will often spin these up on Ubuntu servers and you can run it on Windows server. You can also run it on Mac OS and then you can have multi-site, you can host it, right? So a lot of people will self host this and a lot of times MF, MSPs, if you're having an MSP manage your hardware or you are an MSP, you may have your own controller that you manage, which is using that downloadable network, uh, Unify network application. And so you're gonna use gateways. Now, with all of the other network hardware, switches, access points, the building and building bridges, all of those things can be adopted into the Unify network application whether it's running on a cloud gateway or whether it's a self-hosted install or a third party hosting that. Let's talk about Unify Access. So Unify Access is Ubiquiti's building access control system. And they have worked very hard over the last few years to make this a full featured platform. I mean, they even sell crash bars for doors, emergency override buttons. <clears throat> you can use an app, you can use different types of cards or fobs, and you can then tie this into Unify Protect and you can tie it into Unify Talk, which we're gonna get to. So they do have this full featured um, building access control system. It is very easy to configure, very easy to manage. You do have to run the Unify Access software on some sort, some sort of a cloud console a, see here, a, a cloud gateway or a, a cloud console, which would be your NVRs, your cloud key, things like that. Then Unify Connect is a very interesting platform. And you can see here, we've got an EV charger. We've got two examples of digital display. So the screen that says Unify Connect on it is actually a display that's made by Ubiquity. You can power it over PoE and you can do digital signage with it. And they are adding more features to the digital signage all the time. The connect key in the middle is a device that you can plug into any display that has HDMI and you manage this all through Unify Connect and you can do scenes and orchestration and Rumor has it that there's some lighting products that may be around the corner. I can't comment on that because I really don't know. I will tell you that I use Unify Connect. We use Cloud Key Gen 2s for those. And it has been an excellent drop-in replacement for most other digital signage. And if it does, if you're looking for features that it doesn't have natively, you can host a web server, run WordPress. There are digital signage themes for WordPress, 
and you can point these to that website and do it that way. There's a lot of ways to accomplish this. So Unify Connect also has to run on a Unify Cloud gateway. I don't think it runs on any console besides the cloud, the cloud key Gen 2. Then we have Unify Protect. And if <clears throat> there's been one product that we can tell that they've worked very hard on, it is Unify Protect. So Unify Protect is Ubiquity's security camera solution. It has become much more mature than it has ever been in the past. You can see we've got a license plate reading camera here that is specifically tuned to capture license plates in the dark. Uh, during the day, your regular cameras will work. They've enhanced it with uh, APIs and alerts and notifications and all sorts of AI. And the really great thing about everything Ubiquity that we're gonna get into in another video, but everything with Ubiquity, you can run in your own network. None of the processing for this is done outside of your hardware that you own, by the way. There's no licensing fees with any of this, which is another great selling point and the AI is all done in-house you can call it on the edge whatever you want to do but all of the AI processing for Unify Protect is done locally and I don't think that they tout that enough because we're seeing other traditional vendors that we used who are going to like lean on Google Gemini and I think that personally I think that that could be a mistake and as much as you can own your data and do all of these things in-house, I, I think you get a better bang for your buck. You get better security, in my opinion, as long as you know how to set everything up. And we don't have to rely on those vendors. And they are just making this ecosystem so much, so much better. You've got doorbells. You've got, I don't know, a dozen or two dozen different types of cameras. And once again, you can integrate this into Unify Talk you can integrate this into Unify Access, right? So all of these things in the Ubiquity Unify ecosystem are working together, starting to talk. And you can even make Protect work now with OnVIF cameras. You can do webhooks, API pushes, all kinds of things. So if you haven't looked at Protect in a while, it is definitely worth a look. And this does have to run on a cloud console, so your Enterprise NVR, your NVR Pro, your standard NVR, a cloud key, or any of the Unify cloud gateways. So your UDM Pro, your UDM SE, your uh, UDM Pro Max, all of those types of devices will run Protect. Then we, <clears throat> excuse me, then we have Unify Talk, which is Ubiquity's uh, PBX solution or their phone system solution. Now, this does have integration with Unify Protect, and uh, I, th I don't quote me, there might be some Unify Access uh, integration, but definitely with Protect. Now, this does have to run on either a, a Cloud Key Gen 2 or a Unify OS Cloud Gateway. So it's one of those devices running Unify OS, they can run the full stack. They do offer a version of this um, where you don't have to use their monthly paid service, but you don't get all the features if you don't do that. We do support this. We have installed it, you know, new installs. Uh, we've used third-party SIP providers. You can do some light integration with other uh, SIP phones and things like that. But Unify Talk, once again, you buy the hardware, you own it. You don't necessarily have to use Ubiquity's per phone number monthly charge, but you get more, uh, more features if you do that. And of course, it does have the Protect integration. And I think if you have the doorbell too, if somebody rings your doorbell, I think you could have it come up on the screen. They do have an ATA and they're on the generation three of the phones. So Unify Talk, part of that stack, has to run on either the Cloud Key Gen 2 or Unify Cloud 
gateway, not a standard gateway. So you're looking at all the things that are available. You're looking at all this terminology, like where do I start? It's overwhelming. I've got all this information. I've got all these people on Facebook, all these people on Reddit, all these people on the Ubiquity community, right? And when you start asking tech people questions, you're going to get, if you ask a thousand people, you might get a thousand different answers. So our recommendation along with Ubiquity's recommendation is that the lowest um, barrier to entry or the easiest entry into the ecosystem is to get a cloud gateway that runs at Unify OS and can run all the apps. So you can see here, I've got the UDR 7, the Unify Dream Router 7. It can run multiple applications. So if you're undecided, you know, how you want to scale this or you want something that's very simple, compact, you could go with a, a UDR7. You can get your hands on the software. You can um, not have to pay licensing fees, right? Everything is kept locally. In another video, we're going to talk about how Ubiquity is leveraging the best of these hybrid solutions. That's going to probably be the next video in this series. So that's what we would recommend is to pick up some sort of a cloud gateway, one of the ones that isn't quite so expensive. That way you can take a look at everything, decide if it's for you. And if you decide, you know, it's not for you, you've still got a router and this has a switch and an AP built into it. It's going to run fine. And there's always people looking to buy these. So you wouldn't have any problems selling this if you decided, decided that it wasn't for you. So that's where we recommend that you, that you start. And I threw a lot of information at you very quickly. So if you have questions, you can reach out. You can put your questions down in the comments. You can go to our website, fill out the contact form that's right there on the front page. You can come over, over to our community and ask questions over there. We want to help you make sure that you're getting the right hardware, that you understand what you're buying. Because I will tell you that we have run into several situations where people have gone out They've bought the hardware. They've bought the wrong hardware. Now we're dealing with an RMA. We've got to exchange it, you know, and so we just want to make sure that you understand kind of high level what the differences are, what the pros and cons are, and make sure that you're buying the right hardware for what you want to accomplish. So that is our high level overview of the Unify ecosystem as far as the hardware and software goes. And if you go to UI.com, you can dig in and start looking at the minutia that really gets into uh, the technical differences of the hardware. If you've got questions about that, you can also reach out. But I will tell you that even though you can access all of your Unify hardware without being behind it at your office, at your home, that is where they are leveraging that hybrid solution. So all of your data stays local, but Ubiquity has a way like other vendors that you can access that gear remotely. And we're going to talk about that more in depth in the next video in this series. So if you've got questions about this, let me know down below. Uh, reach out on our website, reach out on our community. And if you like this video and it helped you, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, and share. Follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below, along with affiliate links, a Patreon link. And if you need IT consulting, if you want to get an expert on the phone and talk in depth about this, uh, talk about, you know, maybe upgrading some of that old hardware that's been kicking around for something new, whether it's Wi-Fi, wired, whether it's storage, because we haven't even talked about the storage side of this yet, because they do have a NAS. Um, you know, whether it's voice over IP or security or all of those things that you need, head on over to willyhow.com, fill out the contact form that's on the front page, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Like I said, come on over to the community at community.willyhow.com and start the conversation. Once again, I'm Willie. I hope this has helped clear up a little bit of the confusion about how, how deep and how wide the Unify ecosystem is. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.